much more. And I can tell you that no president has ever fought harder for our farmers than I did. By contrast, Ron De Sanctimonious. Have you ever heard of him? <laughs> he was losing badly. I endorsed him, and he ended up winning. He was losing. He was so low. He was lower than anybody. I said, Ron, let me tell you, if George Washington came back from the dead and he had the support of Abraham Lincoln, you can't get elected. <laughs> he said, sir, if you endorse me, if you endorse me, sir, I, I'm telling you, I can win. And, you know, he fought a little bit along with 200 other people, frankly, but he fought a little bit for when they did impeachment hoax number one and impeachment hoax number two, to total hoaxes. And so I figured, what the heck? The one that was winning, Adam Putnam, was the head of agriculture in Florida, and he had it made. He was leading by so much. Uh, he was already measuring the carpets in his beautiful new office that he was planning to move to. But Ron was losing badly. And I said, all right, let's give it a shot, Ron. I don't know if you can make this. This is a big one. He was so far behind. Because you know why? Because he was a lousy candidate. And I endorsed him, and he became like a rocket ship. And he ended up getting the nomination. Then I held a few rallies for him, because he was not going to beat the man that he was running against, who at the time was said to be the hottest guy in the Democrat Party. And Ron said, no, I won't be able to beat him. Oh, you'll beat him. And I did three rallies where we had massive crowds. Mass I wish we had a rally today. By the way, there are thousands of people outside, can't get in. Great job. But this was really a, this was really a gathering of, of farmers, largely farmers. So we wanted to do this a little bit differently. But we have thousands of people. And we're going to come back. We're going to do some really big rallies over the next month and a half. So here and in Nebraska. But uh, so he ended up winning, and then they said to him, they shouted, anyone, look, some people I help, some people I get in. This guy, I got in. He was dead. He was dead as a doornail. And I like loyalty, you know, a little loyalty. So three, three years later, they say, will you run against the president? He said, I have no comment. I said, whoa, no comment. That means he's running. <laughs> That's what that means. And since then, he became Ron De Sanctimonious to me. And he would be a total disaster. First of all, he's got no personality. You probably found that out, because his polls are crashing. He's got no personality. But he would be a catastrophe for the farmers of Nebraska and Iowa and every place else, any place else. I think if a lot of other people also. De Sanctis, as I call him, the, the abbreviation. Is a globalist sellout and Paul Ryan and Karl Rove, acolyte, who's in the pocket of Wall Street donors at the Club for No Growth. Did you ever hear of the Club for No Growth? You know what they call them also? The Club for China Growth. They are the worst. I was with them for a while. We were 61 and 0. And then we had arguments over a couple of candidates that I liked. And my candidates won. They don't like me too much. Club for No Growth. They're more concerned with China than they are with our country. They would outsource every American farming job to a foreign country. This is what Rhonda Sanctimonious wants to do, and uh, you would — it would be a horrendous situation for this state and for neighboring states. De Sanctis opposed my China tariffs, the ones where I gave you $28 billion, by the way, and that was just a small portion of what we took in. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. Do you think they like me? Not too much. Very simply, De Sanctis sided with the communists in China. I sided with the farmers in America. Does that sound good? Ooh. That's good. I'm going to use that again. I like that, right? No, I, I've always been with the farmers. I was with them right from the beginning. That includes ethanol. Every Iowan also needs to know that Ron DeSanctis totally despises Iowa ethanol and ethanol generally. He's been fighting for years. Don't forget, he was a congressman, and he was voting against it and fighting for years to kill every single job supported by this very important industry. Ending the renewable fuel standard was one of his top priorities as a member of Congress. He wanted to end it. And if he had his way, the entire economy of Iowa would absolutely collapse, because it would collapse if you did that. DeSanctis slandered the ethanol mandate as, quote, 
socialism. He called it socialism and called his vicious plan to annihilate the Iowa farming industry as a total no-brainer. Now he's going to come on here and probably say, I'm actually quite in favor of ethanol. I think it's wonderful. You know, one thing about a politician, I learned this long before I ran for office. Uh, when they have their initial thoughts, that's what they go back to. So uh, he may have to come in and he may have to say, I love ethanol. Isn't it wonderful? But he's uh, — what he's done to ethanol has uh, been very bad. And the people in the ethanol industry understand that he's bad news. In Florida, DeSantis is famous for his cruel targeting of family farms, not in favor of the farms. In a callous betrayal of farmers, DeSantis recently vetoed over $130 million in farm subsidies, prompting the Florida Agricultural Commissioner to state in total disbelief, this is no conceivable, and there is no conceivable reason to target agriculture in a year when we have billions and dollars and billions of reserves. Agriculture was harmed today by the governor of Florida and harmed very badly, and it's true. And he's going to do that to Iowa and Nebraska and everybody else, because that's his inclination. If you want to defend American farmers and grow more farm products in the USA, then you should vote for a very fine gentleman named Donald J. Trump. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.